So a friend of mine just finished building this Optimus Prime model kit and he messaged me saying, hey, this model kit has a trigger finger but no gun. And then he said, actually, no, wait, it's a pointing finger. And then he said, oh, wait, no, actually, no, it is a trigger finger, but there's no gun. So that's kind of weird. And he said, are you able to print out a gun for it? And I said, well, probably. Now, this is a great timing because I just did a video on printing out action figures. In particular, I talked about doing a Spider-Man, uh, the Tobey Maguire one specifically. And I am planning another video where I'm gonna print out the rest of the figure and show how all of that's gonna look and feel. But this got me pretty interested because I also had the kit. I've already built the kit and I have a video showing how I did that. And it's funny because if you're in Russian, you can't actually watch the short because of the music that I put on there, but that's fine. Uh, in any case, it's pretty easily built and I think it's pretty solid looking overall. Not a ton of accessories. You can see he's got fists right here. He's got these reaching hands. Then he actually does have a sort of pointing finger, two fingers actually. Then we have our trigger finger. So again, I agree this is entirely weird to include because either it's a trigger finger or it's a finger to pick his nose. I, I don't know. But I did a search and I looked for weapons and I found a few interesting things. So number one, uh, this Optimus Prime is supposed to be from the latest movie that came out, Rise of the Beast. And in that movie, while he does have a weapon, it's not a standard like gun looking cannon type of weapon. So I kept looking and eventually I decided that I was going to use a gun that was technically designed for the previous version of Optimus from the Bumblebee movie. Now that gun uh, looks a lot like his original G1 gun, but obviously adapted uh, in a few ways. And even though it's not technically for this Optimus Prime, I think it's still going to be just fine. So I purchased both files, downloaded, ran them through the software, and I decided to upscale them a little bit. So here's the thing. So both guns that I downloaded are scaled for the Hasbro release of Optimus Prime. So obviously the gun that's specific to the recent movie is for that Optimus. And then the other gun that's like the G1 is going to be for the Bumblebee Optimus. But both of them are approximately the same height, which when I Googled it showed 7.1 inches. And if we look at this one, the official size from Yolo Park says 20 centimeters. If we do a quick measurement here, uh, it's more than that because 20 centimeters was showing about like 7.8 inches. This one is nearly eight and a half inches from the bottom of his feet to the top of his ears. So that's a good bit taller, I would say. So what I wanted to do was scale up the guns to make sure that they would match more appropriately to this size, right? Because if your Optimus Prime is a little bit smaller, then your weapons are gonna be a little bit smaller. Thus the peg and the hands won't necessarily match correctly if you have a bigger Optimus and a smaller peg. Now that's the awesome thing about 3D printing is that it's pretty easy to just scale your model to the size that you want it to be. So that's not always gonna be the exact case, but in this case, I think it worked out pretty well. So first let's look at the Bumblebee gun. So I'm pretty excited about how this came out. I'll do my best to find either some footage or a picture of what it actually looks like in the Bumblebee movie as well, just so you can get an idea. But I think this looks fantastic. And there's quite a bit of detail that you can see. And again, this is why I love resin printing so much. So you can see the ridges right here and even on top let's see how well that comes out you can even see the ridges right in the center there and that's really neat and so a lot of great detail in there and i think this came out great so let's see how well it fits in hand so just to show the size of the hand that he has where you could actually slip something through and just so you can see this is the trigger finger i'm going to go ahead and just peg it in now and you can see that it fits almost perfectly. And I say almost because if I shake it a little bit, it will come out like that, you can see. But the size of the hand does fit the peg just fine. Now, I think the problem is that, again, this isn't necessarily designed for this one. So that's part of the problem. And so because of that, like the hand isn't exactly round, it's more of an oval shape. So that's part of the problem too. I think maybe if I printed this a little bit bigger to fill in more of the space, it would hold a little bit better. And so even though it doesn't hold perfectly in the hand, I think if you get a pose just right, then it can hold. And even if you don't want to do that, like I said, you could scale it up a little bit bigger to make it fit a little bit more rigidly. Or if you like the scale of it, you could probably even uh, customize the file a little bit to make just the peg bigger itself so that the gun stays the same size. You could potentially even create just a cylinder file that fits right around it like a sleeve to make just the peg a little bit thicker. There's a whole bunch of different ways that you could solve the issue of the gun not holding correctly without having to result to 
glue or sticky tack. Although if you wanted to result a sticky tack, that should be just fine as well. Now let's look at our second gun. And I think this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. So the gun in Rise of the Beast is quite a bit different, which makes sense because they weren't on Earth for very long. And so their weapons would be alien compared to Earth weapons, right? This came in four pieces. So here is the base piece. You've got a handle right here. And then we've got this peg piece, which is just a cylinder. And this will go through uh, this guy right here. And then the cylinder will connect to uh, that hole. And then the other end will connect here. And so I believe I'm supposed to just kind of glue it all together. And here's our completed gun using a little bit of glue. And I had to uh, shave out the parts just a little bit to make them fit a little bit better. But here's what we got. And I think that's really cool looking. What I'm most excited about though is the fact that this spins. And that's really fun. I do believe these uh, parts right here and here are actually supposed to um, be like empty. Like you're supposed to be able to see through those just as part of the design. And uh, for whatever reason, the 3D print decided to just fill this in, which is okay. You can kind of see how they're kind of see through, right through, you can kind of see the light through there. And so it just means that it's really thin. So uh, I could just kind of cut those out and make it m that much closer to what it's supposed to be. But now let's actually just see how it looks uh, with Optimus actually holding it. So again, we've got his gripping hand and we've got our peg. And this one, this one has no problem going in or staying on. Now the elbow doesn't want to stay up, but that's a separate problem. <laughs> so, but that's it and that works. And I think that's awesome. That's super fun. Now, that's not really my preferred gun because obviously I'd rather have him holding like this super cool looking guy. But if you really want the accuracy, then this is an awesome way to go. Now, obviously you're gonna wanna paint these to really finish them out. And if you wanna see me try to paint these, uh, and I'm not very great at painting, but if you wanna see me try to do it, then let me know in the comments below. And if you like this Optimus Prime, then you might like the Optimus Primal, which I have a whole video on over here.